we're going to continue to simplify roots and well sometimes referred to as radicals just like we did in the last lesson however these may not work out quite as nice as they did in the last lesson now for the most part you're going to still start out doing the same things but keep in mind when you're simplifying roots there's kind of three things you want to be aware of you don't want to leave fractions inside of a root and you don't want to leave any roots in the bottom the denominators of a fraction and anything inside of your root that you can take out you want to do so so as we look at these two problems we're going to start out just like we did in the last lesson writing things as perfect squares because we have a square root so we're going to have a five squared a to the fourth is an a squared and an a squared a b to the ninth is a b squared a b squared a b squared another b squared but to get that ninth we still have to have another b hanging around now, just like yesterday, we said your square root will cancel out all your squares. So we're going to have a 5, an A, an A, a B, a B, a B, and a B. But there's no square in this last B, so your square root doesn't cancel the, anything out there. So this last B to the first is still hanging out inside of your root. And then you can just simplify what's in front. Still with that square root of B hanging out. Here we have a square root, so we're going to once again write things as perfect squares. And then you're going to have lots of y squareds, five of them, with an extra y hanging out. Your square root will cancel out all the squares. However, there's no squared on this last one, so you're still going to have that one hanging out in a root, and then you simplify it. There's nothing wrong with still having a root in your problem because not everything's going to work out nicely like they did yesterday. Here, we have fractions inside of a root, which we don't like. Now, sometimes you can simplify the top and the bottom, simplify the fraction, but in this case, there's no common factors top and bottom. So I'm going to apply the, the root to the top. So take the cube root of the top, cube root of the bottom. Now, I did think of 9 as being a 3 squared, because that's going to help me. Now, as I look here at the bottom, I have a cube root. I don't want to leave roots in the bottom. I need the exponents on my 3 and my x to be third powers, so that my cube root cancels those out. So in other words, this is what I need on the bottom. Because if I have that on the bottom, then it's going to simplify down to this. Now, if that's what I need on the bottom, you got to think, well, i got to multiply by a cube root. And if I multiply the bottom by a cube root, i got to multiply the top by the cube root, because I can only multiply by special forms of 1. And a special form of 1 means whatever I have on the bottom has to match what I have on the top because it's a special form of 1 because multiplying by 1 does not change the value of this expression. So you got to think, okay, 3 squared times what is my 3 cubed? Well, that's 3. So if I multiply the bottom by the cube root of 3, i got to multiply the top by the cube root of 3. And then you got to think, okay, an x to the first times what is an x cubed? Well, that's an x squared. So i got to have the cube root of an x squared on the bottom, cube root of an x squared on the top. This is my special form of 1 right here. So if you multiply the bottoms, in multiplying roots, you'd write it as one big root and multiply what's on the inside, which we have. Same idea on the top. Multiply what's on the inside and write it as one big root. So it's going to be cube root, the 2 times the 3 is 6, and then your x squared hanging out. Now, you would want to see if you can simplify the top. Well, 6 is not a perfect cube and doesn't have any factors that are perfect cubes. The top is an, also has an x squared, and that exponent is smaller than our index, so that will not simplify. So the top's going to just hang out and be that, but the bottom did simplify. We're going to do the same type of thing over here. If we could, we'd simplify this fraction top and bottom, but it can't be done. Nothing's in common. So we apply the 
the root to the top and the root to the bottom. Now, you could go ahead and try to get the root out of the bottom right away. I'm going to choose to simplify each root. The top, write it as squareds, write the bottom as squareds. Your square root cancels out all the squareds, so it's going to put an x in front, but still have a root x hanging out. It's going to put a y cubed in front, still with a y, root y hanging out. Now you notice we have a root hanging out in the bottom. We don't like that. We want to end up with this right here, because this means this part will simplify because your square root will cancel out the squared. So you got to ask yourself, why did the first times what is a y squared? And well, that's just the root of y. So if I multiply the bottom by root of y, I got to multiply the top by root of y, because I can only multiply by special forms of 1. So when you multiply these in the bottom, we get this. Multiply the tops, a root y times a root x, gives me a root xy, still with that x hanging out in front. Now the bottom does simplify, because your square root cancels out your squared here. And uh, y to the first times a y cubed is a y to the fourth. And the top, in this case, does not simplify. Similarly, on this one here, we're going to go ahead and take the cube root. And you can maybe even go ahead and try this one in your own and then watch the video. Cube root of the top, cube root of the bottom. Multiply by the special form of 1 because we need to try to get this on the bottom. So we'd have to multiply by a 3 squared and an a squared. So we've got to multiply that top and bottom. So we multiply the tops together, and we get this. The bottom simplifies, and the top does not in this case. Now before we go any farther, we'll go ahead and take a look at this in the next video.